This incident was captured on transit system video. A further review and interview of witnesses is underway. A thorough background investigation into Ikea is being conducted by the Joint Terrorist Task Force. Now you have the breaking news. This latest failed suicide bomber was inspired by the ISIS attacks on holiday markets at Christmas time in Europe overseas, and he chose this New York City subway system for the Christmas themed posters. That's according to the New York Times. He came into the U.S. on an extended family chain migration visa, something President Trump has been trying to stop. Let's bring in American Islamic Forum for Democracy's Dr. Zudi Jasser. With me now, Dr. Zudi, inspired by the Christmas attacks in Europe. What are your your thoughts there? Well, I think again, Liz, we see that the, the efforts of Homeland Security, no matter how many arrests, no matter how much they do, ultimately a whack-a-mole will get through, we, we'll miss. And um, the inspiration, the ISIS brand, as you can tell, this Bangladeshi doesn't speak Arabic. He probably knows nothing about Syria or Iraq, and yet he was radicalized with a Bangladeshi origin. He's been here six and a half years, so midway through the Obama administration, he was here at the beginning of the Arab Spring, even though Bangladesh had nothing to do with the Arab Spring, we are winning the battles in Syria and Iraq, but we're losing the war against the ideology of Salafi jihadism. And the ISIS brand, this is a victory for them, even though there were only minor injuries, thank God. The bottom line, though, is they're all over the news. They have us on defense. We need, Liz, an offense. We have no offense into the communities, into the pools that are radicalizing these individuals. Some explosive numbers, 9.3 million immigrants came here to the U.S. via chain migration, meaning through family ties. That's from 2005 to 2015. Doctor, that's more than 70 percent of all new immigration in that period. What's your reaction to those numbers? Well, it's interesting. After Sapov's truck attack, we talked about the diversity program. Now we hear about, now we're talking more about chain migration. Every point of access into the country needs to be vetted extremely. We need to start to have a whole of government approach, Liz, to anyone coming in, whether it's on visa or, or, or natural immigration, whatever it might be. We need to start vetting against the ideology. We're not vetting against anyone about whether they believe in the system of secular governance. These individuals that divide the world into the land of Islam and the land of war, we never vet for those type of things. So they come in as part of the Salafi insurgency. And it, after a few years, they get brewed up by, by uh, uh, groups that radicalize yeah. them and tell them this country is against them, et cetera. And then at the end of the day, one little online operational uh, a moment, and they decide to act like this guy he, did and to, others have before him. To your point, the West Side Highway bike path terrorist, he killed eight, wounded a dozen. He is defiant. He said he was proud of what he did. He wanted to display an ISIS flag in his ho uh, hospital room. He came here on the visa lottery uh, for diversity system. And now we have Republican Texas Representative Michael McCall about pass warnings from ISIS. Let's roll tape. What I worry about is ISIS sent a message two weeks ago saying that we will see you in New York for Christmas soon. And so we know that they're directing, targeting attacks around the Christmas season. To your point, these guys are defiant. We have to vet for ideology. That's your point, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, look at the, uh, you talk about diversity programs. That's ethnic diversity. Well, the Omar Mateen was Afghani. The San Bernardino bombers were from Indo-Pakistani region. Uh, the uh, uh, truck uh, 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 user back a month ago was uh, from Uzbekistan. This individual is Bangladeshi. There's some from Syria. They're from all over. Any Muslim-majority country is ripe for radicalization and operationalization. And therefore, once we address the ideology, which is political Islam, separatism, insurgency against secular democracies, then we will begin down the right path. Otherwise, we just continue this whack-a-mole and, and scratch our head and plugging each hole while the rest of the ship sinks. Yeah, let's do a little more digging into that terror attack before today's failed suicide bombing in the New York City subway system. The terrorist that Dr. Zudi Jasser just mentioned, he is uh, the truck attacker, Saifullah Saipov. He's lawyering up. He's pleading not guilty. Now, this is a, a terrorist accused of killing eight people, injuring 12, after he drove a truck into pedestrians and bicyclists in New York City in October. Again, pleading not guilty to charges of murder and terrorism. What do you think, doctor? Will today's terrorist, the failed suicide bomber, do the same? Will he lawyer up and say not guilty? 
Well, these individuals, we've seen many. I mean, you had uh, Tariq Mahena in Boston became a hero while he was in prison, claiming it was free speech, even though he was sympathizing with al-Qaeda. All of these guys, they don't really care what happens to them. They just want to become the, the martyrs and the mantles of the message of Awlaki or any of these other imams that radicalize them. And at the end of the day, they will use the platform of claiming not guilty so that they can get more attention to further jihadis and use their their trial as a radicalization process for other wannabe jihadis. And that's why we still need to maintain uh, uh, a vigilance, see something, say something, and not let these uh, folks uh, uh, get away. And, and, doctor, basically and doctor, with... to your point, they're using the U.S. system against innocent Americans, right? Absolutely. I mean, they see our freedom as a weakness. And by the way, we should not change any of that. Once we do, then we've declared that we've lost. But at the end of the day, we should call them what they are, which are traitors, treasonous. They should not be given access to come here. We should have ideological vetting, but we should not change who we are, because that's really the best asset against radical Islam is secular democracy, where Muslims who are reformers have a laboratory to do things against those ideas that you just can't do in any of the countries where they've come from. To your from. point, they're enemy combatants. Dr. Zudi Jasser, exactly. thank you so much. I really appreciate it.